You ever heard of Handbrake? Well, Handbrake uses FFmpeg underneath the hood, and FFmpeg is a good way to programmatically trigger your video and audio processing and splicing and dicing. You can do all sorts of things. The instruction manual for FFmpeg is insane. The number of options is insane. It's a project that's been around forever. I have a bunch of scripts that I'm gonna run right now to show you and demonstrate it. On these machines right here, we've got the M2 MacBook Air. We've got the M1 Max MacBook Pro, 64 gigs of RAM, M2 Pro, MacBook Pro, and an M2 Max MacBook Pro. I'm expecting some good stuff from that one. Now, I'm a casual user of FFmpeg. I've used it to, to concatenate files, but Tolga, he's a viewer on this channel, and he sent me a bunch of really awesome, crazy commands to run. Now, I'm gonna process this clip. It's a 60 second video clip of one of my old videos, 176 megabytes. It's a 4K video file to begin with. It's one minute long, and I'm gonna do all sorts of little processing at it. We're gonna kick things off with this one. You see what I'm talking about? I don't know what 90% of these things are. What I do know is that we're gonna take the 4K file and convert it to a 1080 file, 1080p file. This is the parameter for that. We're also using this parameter, libx264, which is the software encoders to do the processing. So there's two ways of doing it. You can do it using hardware and you can do it using software. There's pluses and minuses to each. Software takes typically a little bit longer to do, but the result is cleaner, smaller files, typically, and uh, better looking video from what I've seen. When you're using hardware encoding, you're getting bigger files and the quality is not as good. Now, I'm running this on a Mac. It could be a very different story if you're running this on different hardware, like uh, maybe an NVIDIA RTX, for example. We're going to do both ways here and try it out and see what the differences are, just to show you that both ways are possible. So the first test is going to be a single command and then the second test is going to be a batched command where you're processing multiple files one after another which is a pretty typical workflow now also to this command to the beginning of it i'm going to add the time command that way we know how long it takes all right let's go this should not take long. Okay, okay, we've got a result. The MacBook Air is not gonna cut it if you're doing this kind of work. It got a time of 16.2 seconds to do this procedure. And then we jump right, <laughs> we have the time to 8.043 seconds. Have the time just sounds really weird to say. It is half the time, we have the time. It's a weird word two times faster on the M1 Max and even faster on the M2 Pro, 7.285 seconds and even faster on the M2 Max, 7.109. Very close, M2 Pro and M2 Max. I wonder how it's gonna do when there's multiple instances running. Now for the hardware test, I need to change a parameter here. Lib264 is gonna be changed to H264 Video Toolbox. That's, that's the name of it, I don't know. Everything else stays the same. Okay, ready to go, and we're off. Yeah, that's wrong. It's not video toolbox, it's H264 underscore video toolbox. Continuity just saves my life in these tests. I don't have to type this out, paste it from one computer to another, it's freaking great. And we're ready to go again. There we go. Okay, for the hardware encoding, the M2 MacBook Air didn't do so bad. 9.3 seconds on the Air, 9.7 seconds on the M1 Max, unexpected. The M2 Air beat the M1 Max for the hardware encoding. That's weird, that's unexpected. <laughs> the M2 Pro, 9.3 seconds, and the M2 Max, 9.0 seconds. All very close to each other. Gonna do that just one more time to make sure everything is up and up, as they say in England, I guess they don't say that. Do they say that? Are you from England? Do, do they say that in England? Everything's on the up and up? All right, we got results, folks. 9.295 on the M2 MacBook Air, 9.699. Again, the MacBook Air beats out the M1 Max MacBook Pro and 9.37 and 9.067. The MacBook Air beat the M2 Pro MacBook Pro in this particular example. Wow, unexpected. So all the fans are off. Uh, this one doesn't have a fan, but all the other fans are off 
off. The temperatures are pretty cool over here. We got 37 degrees, 46 on this one, 64 and 38. Big difference between those two. Not sure why. It's not like it's warmer here. Now we're going to do another test, a rapid fire test. So we're going to build them sequentially. And let me show you what that looks like. I took that same script and I created a shell script with different resolutions. So I'm going to kick off the shell batch file, basically. It's not a batch file, it's a shell script. And here we're going to have a 240p video created, then 360, then 480, 720, and finally a 1080p video. We're using software encoding here, libx264. Here I'm going to just issue the time command for the entire script, and I'm going to call the ladder.sh file using the shell command, and this is what I'm going to execute. And did you think I was going to forget about our friend, the Schwarzenegger? No, this is Schwarzenegger 2.0, in case you haven't met him yet. <laughs> all I got to do is press one button and it's going to execute all these at the same time. And let's do it. Let's go. Now, while that's happening, check it out. We've got the MacBook Air and it's hitting pretty high temperatures over there. We're going past 100 degrees. This is the Max M1 Max. It's done already, but it was hitting about 90. This one is 95. It's done already, the M2 Pro. And this one is nice and cool at 50, 49 degrees. The M2 Max is nice and cool. The M2 Pro is still really warm. Let's take a look at the results. Here is where the big difference is gonna be for those folks that are gonna be processing multiple files. If you're using FFmpeg, you're probably doing that. The MacBook Air did this in 57.6 seconds. It has eight cores. The number of cores does play a big part in this. Then we've got the M1 Max with 10 cores, 40.69 seconds. And the two winners are very close to each other because they both have 12 cores, 35.36 seconds on the M2 Pro and 35.10 seconds on the M2 Max. Now I'm gonna run this one more time, boom. <laughs> and let's see if we can get some throttling happening on any of these machines. I don't think that the MacBook Pros are going to throttle at all. They haven't even kicked off the fans yet once. They may do that, but they haven't done it yet. The MacBook Air will probably throttle very, very shortly. And this one finished. Let's do that again. The MacBook Air is still running the first iteration. These three already started their second one. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm constantly running the program over and over again, because if you have a lot of files to process, that's what you're going to be doing in an automated fashion. I'm doing it the silly way, <laughs> but I do want to take a look at how that's going to affect long-term performance. And it does look like it's having an effect, folks. Everything is slowing down just a tad bit and I'm hearing fans. I finally wrote a loop, a shell loop to keep running this program. So I don't have to trigger this thing manually every time. And guess what? What I suspected is in fact happening. Check it out. We've got the M2 Max and the throttling is set to no right here. No throttling. No throttling on the M2 Pro MacBook Pro. No throttling on the M1 Max MacBook Pro. But here on the M2 MacBook Air, we do have throttling. So we know for a fact that's not the machine to be using. It's going to be much, much slower at this point. But let's have a look at the power usage too. On the M1 Max, we've got... Since this is software processing, we're using the CPU P cores mostly, and we're at 30, 60 megahertz around there on the M1 Max, makes sense. On the M2 MacBook Pro and the M2 Max, both of these are also using the P cores mostly, but they're around 3260, 3300 megahertz. Definitely getting more performance out of these. If I were to take this test to the end, which is gonna take a while, I made this loop pretty long just to show you what's going on. These two machines will eventually win out, of course. This is the kind of job that the M2 Max will probably excel at because it's really made for that, but the M2 Pro will probably do pretty well as well. Now, if you take a look at all these machines, they have their fans ramped up to 2200 RPM. This one is a 2400 RPM, 26 now, and 2000, which is pretty high for the M1 Max machine. It doesn't usually get that high, but since there's no throttling going on, even at these high temperatures, the fan is really managing these machines quite well. I'm not expecting there to be any issues finishing this test. We can extract the time that we took to run us one of these iterations to 100. It's going to be pretty much the same. If it does change, I'll leave a comment down below. Once this finishes, it's going to take a while. Otherwise, thanks a lot for watching this test. If you did appreciate this, it does take uh, quite a bit of research and setup to do this kind of stuff. Do hit that like button if you appreciate that. Thanks so much. And uh, I will see you very soon again for more tests. Bye-bye now.